We are now with Justine Kish. Go ahead. Congrats on the win. Uh, Aloha. <laughs> that was Ooh. not supposed to happen if you asked almost Anyone. everybody else in the building, but I think they probably didn't ask you. Uh, I was surprised when they did ask me, <laughs> but um, I'm not one to shy away from opportunities and for, for chances or... Um, <laughs> I know, I know I'm a world-class fighter. Um, I won a world title in Muay Thai. Um, and since my, uh, MMA career, my professional MMA career began, there were so many ups and downs uh, between my mom's sickness, her death, um, and just lots of uh, traveling um, back and forth the East Coast, the West Coast, four knee surgeries. It was a lot. I feel like I did really well in Muay Thai because I operated off of really momentum, right? And the hardest thing whenever I started uh, MMA was finding momentum again from knee surgeries, from uh, trying to take care of my mom. And it wasn't just me, it was my family. We were all trying to take care of her and uh, through her death. So um, I did my best to, um, to still remain in training camp and just still follow my dream. Um, but obviously my performance suffered a little bit. And I could tell, even my wins and my losses, I was like, eh, something's not right. Um, and I just kept on going, just kept on chugging along, and um, things happen, things change uh, during hiatuses, and so it was up to me to really uh, keep on finding um, the, the right circuit, the right training, the right people, and I don't know how this happens in my life, but the best people in the world um, that I needed, they, they took me in with open arms. I reached out to Chris Cyborg and I was like, Chris, I'm, I'm losing these fights. I've only met her a couple of times in training. And she welcomed me to her camp, to her training, her coaches. And um, she, you know, just out of sheer belief, right? Um, and it was what I needed. I finally had a female that was bigger and better and stronger and number one and just a freaking cyborg in the sport, right? <laughs> Um, so she took me in with open arms, and uh, finally I started learning things I really needed to learn. Uh, not just Muay Thai, not just um, things. My coaches and I discuss this all the time, how MMA has become its own sport. Um, so I don't want to get into too many details and give away too many secrets. Um, but um, uh, lots of crazy things happened in this last camp, and I wasn't even able to train with Chris the way I wanted to. Um, and one way or another, it was maybe a silver lining because... Um, I realized um, I was really still overcompensating, if that's the right word, um, overcompensating for uh, my injury, my knee injury. And after working with him and then dedicating so much time, finally my movement is back. Finally my, 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 my striking feels balanced. And um, oh my God, I can't tell you how many hours a day, how much time was dedicated, and uh, so much time I didn't even realize, right? Um, so again, that's just my example of how many people just believe in me. It's just like these top-notch people, and I'm like, I, I don't know what they see, but um, when I'm given an opportunity, I've given my absolute best. Um, even on rough days, I, I'm so, I, I still try to show up. And um, it's 100% a team effort. I know I belong at the top. It was just a very rigorous journey, uh, if that's the word, but yeah. Because it's been such kind of a, a rocky few years, you come in here, you have to fight Alima in her hometown, <laughs> yeah. her home arena. You know that everybody's going to be crazy against you. Oh, gosh, yeah. Like, uh, everything is stacked against you. So how, I guess, satisfying is it to get a win like this? I mean, you absolutely, people out there are pissed right now. Like, you ruined their night. Oh, come on now. You have to have. <laughs> you have to have. You heard what it was like for her yeah. walking out. yeah. I mean, that's a, this is a, that was a stunner for everybody that, that's, that's sitting out there. So I guess how much satisfaction do you get out of that and, and how much of a kind of a push does that give you going forward, especially after having that rough run that you had? Uh, with the, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. She's number one contender, number one in the world and for Bellator MMA. And uh, I'm coming off of three losses in a row, but again, I know I, know I belong. I know I belong. I'm, I'm, I'm top-tier fighter. I know I am. Um, and someone in the Bellator family and the bracketing, I don't know, maybe they saw the same thing that, I'm, that, my, that I feel in my heart, right? So I don't ask any questions, but I'm not going to shy away from this, right? And 
Um, yeah, she's number one, but I look at every, like, I look at her like any other opponent or any other competition. Like, I look at her like, it's not a threat. I can do it. I'm capable. Uh, I've just got to um, be more resourceful. I've got to figure out what, what works best for me with the, um, with the current situations that I have, like anyone else. And it, as crazy as things went, I was hospitalized during my last camp. I had a, um, go to, uh, my coaches had a, uh, um, my coaches had to work around my hospital schedule because I had to go to the hospital in and out, be on medication, and train to the training camp. And it was very easy to be like, you know what, I'm not going to take this fight. I'm going to go on the next. But I knew if I took that route, I wouldn't have an opportunity like this again. So um, I did everything I could to make sure I got here. And uh, honestly, as crazy as that sounds, I feel like I'm, I mean, I had two training camps with Cyborg, and I had a full camp with just focusing on balance and strength and conditioning and movement and really just paying attention to the things that I didn't know how to do and um, believing in it, believing in the process, believing in my team, and really it was just beautiful. All the stars aligned, like my coach said, and um, have an amazing uh, uh, former teammate who I asked, uh, hey, can you coach me? Because he saw um, things that, he saw the holes in my games, and Renato was able to really hone in and uh, help me practice every single day, way more than I wanted to. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen Renato, but he's pretty big. So I had to push and pull these big, big guys every day. We're talking about over 220 plus pounds. So when I had to push and pull Lima, I was like, I've got this. I've got this all day long. And it's an amazing feeling. Um, it's, it's, I mean, Lima is a top contender in the world, and I just beat number one. So. I'm going to be, uh, I'll, I'll be uh, appreciating this for a good bit. <laughs> so, so that said, like, you know, you beat a former champ, you beat ah. one of the top contenders. Do you feel like this fast tracks you right up into that position Gosh, where you yeah. can say, hey, give me one more Gosh, top tier yeah. fight and then let me fight for a belt? I knew beating her would catapult me to the top, to the brackets, to the top, and it would be, give me more, um, more, a, a bigger platform and maybe more attention. And that's not that really after. I'm just after being the... Uh, uh, pushing myself, being the absolute best, and giving uh, and putting on good shows. Um, I'm an athlete at heart. I've been uh, since I since since uh, since childhood. I love competing. I love entertaining. Um, I love it when I hear the crowd booing and cheering. And um, I know they were very nervous because it started getting really quiet. So I knew I knew I was doing well when the crowd was getting very quiet. Um, so cool little things like that that I can pick up on just from my experiences of being my experience of being an athlete. Um, and again, uh, the phone call I gave to my manager, I was like, when he told me I get this, uh, hey, we're going to be fighting number one, I was like, okay, I'll fight three losses. Like, what's going on here? I was like, crap, I think I just became a tomato can. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this fight, and I'm going to show everyone I'm not a tomato can. I'm a top-tier fighter, and I belong here, and um, did everything I possibly could with an amazing team and coaches, and voila. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Justine, uh, Keelan McNamara here, congratulations on an amazing win. Oh. Um, I suppose my question is, I'm going to keep this short because I'm sure you've got a whole bunch of stuff to do after this, but um, you've already given us such great answers, but my question is, where do you think this ranks in terms of Bellator women's MMA history? Do you think this ranks as one of the best performances that we've ever seen in that regard? Oh wow. Uh Hold on, I, I mean, I haven't even started the play-by-plays in my head yet. So uh, that's really nice to hear from you, of, of, that, of that having potential of being a fight like that. Um, but it was, a, I mean, it was fun. I was having fun in there. It was a good show. So uh, yeah, if me having fun, and that means it was a top-notch performance. Man, I hope every fight feels like that. Because it, it, was, it was amazing being in there. Um, but yeah, it'll take a little bit for me to process um, because I go through the play-by-plays in my head. Um, but um, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I like uh, that. I don't know about that, but I appreciate <laughs> it. Listen, congratulations again, Justine. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you, everyone being here. Thank you so much, Justine. That concludes Thank our time. Thank you. Uh, How do you say goodbye? It's not aloha. Mola? Aloha and mahalo. <laughs> Recording stopped.